My name's Martin Blundell. I live in Bountiful, Utah. Uh, I've been a long time uh, resident of the state, but I've traveled all over the United States, and Canada, and Europe, uh, and, and uh, have uh, subsequently uh, seen a lot, of, a lot of things and a lot of, of uh, beautiful places on, uh, in the landscape. Uh, I, I uh, uh, won this purchase award last year in 2022 here at the museum and, and been very happy, happy about that. This painting is, uh, has, was generated from northern Utah by the Flaming Gorge area. Uh, and in the fall, uh, as you drive up uh, towards that part of the country, the farmland is covered with, with uh, uh, willow trees in the fields. Uh, and and uh, in the fall, uh, this painting becomes a little bit more monochromatic with all the golden and the, and the warm colors which uh, really inspired me, as the, especially when the sun's going down and it gets even warmer. Uh, so I took a couple of photographs of, the, of, of this area and the meandering stream and the fields that uh, connect together and, uh, uh, and the trees that punctuate it vertically. Uh, so all of those things were of interest to me. And so typically I photograph when I go, take my uh, sketchbook and make small uh, thumbnail drawings and, uh, and do these paintings in my studio. Um, this painting is, is uh, interest to me in horizontal lining has been something that has uh, come forward in my work in the past and, and in the present. Uh, this idea of, of uh, more activity in the beginning of a painting, the lower part of the painting in terms of not only texture, but, uh, but color and, and value. And, and working on this idea of, of atmospheric pers perspective as the painting gets lighter towards the horizon and the, li and the lining becomes uh, more horizontal. Um, all of those things, uh, uh, for some reason, have become not only interesting to me, but, but are, are per perpetuated in my paintings. Of course, some kids start with paint by number uh, Christmas gifts and my parents gave me some of those and I was intrigued by that whole hard edge uh, uh, fill in the spaces and, and so I, I, I had a little experience that way but but it was uh, something that I was interested in and I liked. Uh, as I uh, was in uh, junior high school, I had a little bit of art class and, and uh, people encouraged me. They thought that I was doing uh, good work and patted me on the head and, and kind of moved me forward. In high school, I was a Sterling Scholar uh, here in Utah uh, and uh, subsequently went to the University of Utah. And I got a degree in, in um, drawing and printmaking. Uh, and I think that that's something that's, that has transcended into my paintings. A little bit of simplification uh, 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 from uh, the graphic side of printmaking uh, is something that I think has continued in, in the way I formulate paintings. Uh, I started a business um, that, we, uh, that specialized in design and, and uh, illustration work. Um, that morphed into a, a large apparel company. We ran that business for 40 years, and uh, five years ago, I told, we sold the company. I told my wife I'm going to start painting again, uh, uh, and uh, s see if I can do this as, as I retired. So, uh, seriously, painting uh, landscapes is, is what I've been doing for about the last five or six years. I like to describe my work as the intersection of reality and memory. I start a painting uh, as I've described with photographs and drawings and I typically paint with a paintbrush uh, to organize it all and, and, uh, and then halfway through the painting I uh, abandon my resource materials and finish the painting by memory and with a palette knife. 
So it has a tendency to go from the real to the remembered. And those, that process uh, is something that I'm, I'm fond of because halfway through the painting, I think more about how I felt, uh, what, I, what I saw, how I felt about it, uh, the experience, uh, and the feelings are, are easier, easily generated without resource material. And so that's a typical process of the paintings, not only this one, but others that, I, that I've been doing. Um, and it's important to me to uh, uh, not only get the real, but to get the remembered uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, and, and memory into the painting. I, I think it adds uh, something that's really magical and, and something that's unexpected. You know, I started uh, originally painting watercolor paintings, um, and they can be difficult to do if you to do them correctly and, and well. Uh, but I've had it's sort of been a, a, a liberating feeling to paint with with oil paint or acrylic. I typically paint with with oil paint um, and add drying additives to it so that I can paint a little faster. The paint dries overnight and I can keep working on a painting uh, without waiting and waiting for, for oil paint to dry. So um, I like the, I love the color intensity of oil paint and I love the texture of it. Acrylic, unless you add body uh, 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 products to it, flattens out and the color darkens every time it dries. Oil paint is more consistent and, and, and you can build the surface up. I think my paintings need surface texture, I think that's an added quality uh, to the painting. Uh, that uh, uh, over painting and, and uh, developing um, texture on the canvas, I think it's something that's it's appealing to me. I think it appeals to, to people also. I, I tell you a quick story about it. I was at a, a, a show um, and a lady came by and looked at my work and, and we were there alone and she, happened, and she said to me, which one do you like the best? And I pointed to a small painting. Um, it was about 20, 20 by 24 and, and, uh, and she said, why do you like that one the best? I said, well, this painting I've had in my studio for about four years. I started painting and I thought it was good and then I, I got disappointed with it and I left it and pulled it back out and thought I gotta remodel this, I've gotta change it. Well this painting went over iteration after iteration, uh, ultimately changed dramatically uh, and uh, uh, through my remodeling and, and, and dissatisfaction with it. And she uh, said to me, well that's so interesting, she said that painting represents life, doesn't it? Uh, I said, yeah, I think you're exactly right. Uh, uh, there, is some, there is some redemption <laughs> in the process uh, and things become, uh, that you think are lost, uh, uh, really can be found. And uh, she ultimately bought the painting. been a, a satisfying thing to be able to go out into nature and to experience it and the beauty of it is is uh, you get to to filter uh, the amazing world that we live here especially out west in terms of color diversity of the landscape is, is amazing out here the sunsets are are, uh, are predictably fantastic and so uh, I think artists need to remember that, that uh, uh, cameras are good and they take beautiful photographs, but I think it's important that the artists filter what they see and add something to it. And, and uh, like I've described a little bit earlier, I think that's why it's important to, to bring uh, you know, your experience, your feelings, your emotions uh, ultimately into the painting. Uh, 
they say in purchasing art, 90% of the purchases are made um, uh, from an emotional response to the painting. A, a, a couple had, uh, had been following my work on Instagram and uh, she said, oh, I, I'm gonna come up and see you at a show. I wanna do a commission. Uh, she came up and we decided about what direction we were gonna go and what we were gonna do. And she gave me the size and we moved this thing forward, which is always interesting. Uh, uh, the artist always hates a, a, a purchaser to be the art director. You know, you'd much rather let them leave you alone and, and do your thing, which they did, uh, which was nice. And I delivered it and we went into the house to where, where, where this painting was gonna go. And uh, uh, the wife put her hands in her face and broke down and cried. Uh, because she liked, you know, this final product uh, meant so much to her. And, and that's always an interesting experience, the, that interaction between the artist and the, and the purchaser. Well, ultimately, I hope that people feel uh, some of the feelings that I have about the painting that they experience uh, some of the uh, uh, joy that I have in, in, in interpreting the landscape. But I also want them to, to uh, get their own resonance from it. I want them to, uh, this connection between my painting and them is an experience that's unique to them in their viewing. Uh, and so it's, a, it's an interactive process between the artist and the viewer. And I think that's, I think that's important. The galleries always tell me, you know, if, if uh, we're hanging one of your paintings and, and it won't stop somebody in their tracks, probably not gonna be any good. And so I think that's important to, to go beyond a little bit what nature provides and add things to it, like more color, like more texture, like more design, if you will, by adjusting things uh, to the landscape and the scene that you're painting to make it, uh, uh, a little bit bigger than life uh, and, and something to catch uh, people's attention. Um, a lot of people have, have uh, recognized this horizontal lining in my paintings. Uh, it, has a, it has a tendency to make people feel comfortable, at peace, rested. Uh, and I think that that's something that's intuitively happening. In these paintings, you can see that structure underneath the, the bit of vertical that are happening in the, in the, uh, the trees and those, uh, and those patterns. The other thing I'm very interested in is asymmetrical balance. Um, uh, the idea of, of uh, a teeter-totter, if you will, can be heavier on one side or another to make it work. And I, I think that's important in, from, a, from a design perspective uh, that the artist can add uh, sensibility uh, to their work, uh, which is something that intrigues people and makes them wonder. And I think that's an important thing about a painting, that you can live with it for a long time, perhaps forever. People don't throw them away because they are engaging in a way that is a bit mysterious to the viewer and they want to continue to come back and wonder about it.